Hello friends, this is Raj Sastri from Raj Option Trading. Uh, today is June 30, 2021. I want to talk about one of my favorite companies. It's the CureVac, CVAC is the symbol. And they're into healthcare and biotechnology area. And they are revolutionizing uh, in the RNA or mRNA. And you know they, they have vaccines for, they're working on vaccines for COVID-19, uh, various types of cancers. So with that, let's jump in into this company and see if it's worth investing. Um, you know, this is a study, uh, you know, they conducted the interim analysis. Um, you know, main reason stock dropped, um, you know, um, big time is because their efficacy came down to 47%. And as you all know, for uh, companies like uh, Pfizer um, and Moderna, it's uh, about 90%. That's why stock dropped. Uh, but this company is not giving up. They are even, uh, you know, working on this uh, further. So that's a very good news. So stock dropped because there is a, you know, efficacy data, which is 47%. Wall Street really freaked out. Um, and that's why stock dropped. And as you can see here, they have looked at various types of uh, variants here. There are There is alpha, original, original strain, nine variants, and so on and so forth. I think what they are pointing out is because they got so many uh, strains, new strains coming up here. That's why they got to be very careful as they come up with this, uh, you know, this uh, efficacy data, which is very much understandable. So that's why, you know, basically they need some more time and they are committed to work on this uh, COVID vaccine and also various types of cancer, uh, vaccines. So uh, with that, let's jump in here. And as you look at their pipeline, um, the way to read this chart is, you know, they got various stages of their clinical, uh, you know, discovery. Uh, they got preclinical, clinical um, and discovery, development, phase one, phase two, and phase three. Then finally, you know, be, you know they will be out in the market with their vaccine. Um, and as you can see here with the COVID-19, they're working with the uh, Cephi and Bayer. And they're into clinical stage three. This is when they produce some interim data. And with the data, looks like uh, the efficacy rate is a little bit low. That's why stock dropped. So this is one pipeline for them. And they got uh, a rabies pipeline here, 7202. They're into clinical phase one. And they got, uh, you know, the uh, Lhasa yellow fever. They're into pre-clinical development and other two, uh, you know, respirational and as, as well as if the infectious diseases. I think both are into uh, pre-clinical development. So with that, one thing I kind of noticed off the bat, as you can see here, this company knows how to partner, strong partners like Bayer, Cephi, and, um, you know, as you can see here, same story, Cephi, GSK. These guys are really, these guys know how to partner and they got solid pipeline. It's not a one trick pony where, hey, COVID or, um, you know, or nothing else. In this case, they got COVID and multiple other things going on, which is a great story. Now, I feel like, you know, this may be a good opportunity. I like to see where the company is strong, but stock is weak for a headline news. That's when we kind of go in and invest against the not natural grain of, uh, you know, intelligence or tra traditional wisdom, as they say. So with that, let's jump in here. Uh, big news, June 30th. Um, uh, big news is really on June 17th. Uh, CureVac stock fell 39% after its vaccine failure. Uh, folks are wondering, they, they're wondering pain may be just starting and so on and so forth. Um, and also this vaccine uh, for COVID-19 proved just 47% effective against COVID-19 of any severity. I think that's why Wall Street freaked out. Um, but as you can see, your company is not giving up. Uh, June 18, CureVac shares are soaring because company won't give up. I think that's the sign of a great company. You know, you can't just give up because of some headline news, even though they're up against competitors like Moderna, uh, BioNTech, Pfizer. You know, they, you know, with the greater efficacy, company is really not giving up. And they think they got a best shot as it comes to various variants of this COVID. I think they keep, keep working on uh, this vaccine, which is a good story. And they also made some changes. You know, any company they have to look at um, and assess the situation and make appropriate changes. 
this company, you know, they basically appointed a, uh, Dr. Malte as a COO and also transitioned the, you know, the um, Dr. Florian uh, to accelerate the development of uh, RNA printer for manufacturing. I think that's a good news. These guys are making appropriate changes. So now, you know, this Dr. Florian, who is, uh, I think, one of the co-founder um, and also chief, uh, you know, person, he's going to be lead uh, leading the acceleration of this RNA printer and he does not have the COO type responsibilities that's a very smart move you know you, you need your smart people to lead this development that's the great news so with that let's jump in here if as you look at the company's uh, profile here it's a clinical stage biopharma company and they're focusing on various transformative medicines based on mRNA, just like Moderna as an example. And they got, uh, you know, various types of uh, pipeline here, COVID-19, um, uh, 7202, um, and also, you know, as you can see here, yellow fever, uh, 7301. You know, it's not really a one-trick pony. They also have the cancer of skin, head, and neck. Um, and as you can see, they're doing multiple things here, which is a great story. I think that's where, you know, this mRNA will come in very handy. It can really work against multiple indications. Um, I think this company has got right stuff to do. And they're based in Germany. Um, I think uh, Germany is uh, really doing a lot of great things when it comes to uh, these vaccination type studies, which is a great story. And from a stock price perspective, it is a $67 stock, not very expensive. Market cap is at $12.56 billion. Um, you know, it's around mid cap type, you know, area. And as you look at the stock chart here, um, I love this type of stock chart. Stock kind of, you know, stayed sideways in the beginning, um, back in uh, 2020. Um, then they went up all the way, uh, as you can see here. Uh, this is the hype cycle. I think uh, you know Elon Musk and a couple others invested in this company, came down, went up, came down. Now it's big time drop. Uh, now it's trying to really recover a little bit. I think you know when you look at chart like this, you always um, you know have to invest when the stock drops like this. You know you never know when the stock drops, but when you see this type of opportunity, you should just jump in if the company is uh, good fundamentally. You should jump in and buy some and hold it for a while. It will always uh, bounce back for most part. I would recommend don't put all your money in one basket. You know, invest a little bit so that way you know you have more money to put on, uh, put in if uh, some other company drops like this. So with that, I would, uh, you know, I invested some, you know, as it dropped. Um, I'm kind of holding for a while. I'll be adding to my position if it drops further. So, you know, hold a nice chunk and uh, wait for a nice bounce back. So as the company CEO, Dr. Franz um, Werner has, I think he's got a good background here. Um, he joined the company back in June 2012. And before that, he was uh, responsible for, you know, he was a COO. And, um, you know, he, he was responsible for human resources, intellectual property, and so on and so forth. And before joining PureVac, he was also... Uh, Vice President of uh, Singes Pharma and has held various other positions as you can see here. You know, from a CEO perspective, I think uh, he checks out. You know, he's got nice uh, industry experience. I think he can be the right person to take this company forward. And from a news perspective, as you can see here, um, CureVax, you know, folks are wondering, is it a million millionaire maker stock? And I think it dropped back in uh, June 17th. Folks are wondering, is it a good stock to buy? Um, I think overall, um, I feel like now the time is right. Company is a great company. They're working on novel diseases like COVID-19 and cancer cure. Stock has dropped a lot. Still committed to research and development. They got a lot of cash on their balance sheet. I think this could be the right one to invest. So with that, uh, you know, let's look at the competition here. Um, you know, this, this chart tells you, you know, who are all the competitors for uh, CureVac, Pure and, you know, companies in the similar area. Uh, the way to read this chart is I got ticker symbol here, the company, the price, market cap, sales growth is very important. I basically track the sales growth carefully, and margins are very important. 
I don't want to invest in companies with very high debt to equity ratio. For example, you gotta be a little bit careful with companies like Elox with a high debt to equity ratio. And same story with the Marawai. You know, it's got a little bit higher ratio. But we have to look at this case by case. It's not a you know one rule. Then we got ROE that tells you the profitability of the company. And RSI tells you that the right time to buy, or you know, as an example, when the RS, RSI is below 50 or so, or 55 or so, you can buy at this time. It's good to buy. Company is a little bit oversold at this time. Uh, whereas when the RSI is higher, like you know, here buy a path uh, 60, uh, here um, SYNH 61, it's and even Moderna, which is uh, 65, Kindred 79, you'd wait a little bit for company to a little bit cool off and then buy, versus jumping in and buying when the when the RSI is above 55, 60. Then we got institutional ownership that tells you if the companies are backing uh, institutions like you know, big mutual funds, they're backing this company, that's good to see. And short ratio that tells you, can we expect a short squeeze from this company? Uh, if the short ratio is high, you can expect a short squeeze and stocks can soar on any good, new, good news. PS ratio indicates uh, the you know the valuation here. High PS ratio like 100 plus for CureVac. You got to be a little bit careful. Don't buy on a high note when company is doing very nicely from a stock perspective, from a price perspective. Instead, wait for a pullback. Um, and then we got performance, very important, um, including one year and five year performance and how much it's off from 52 week high. When a company is really flirting with 52 week high. It, uh, it's a good idea to wait for a small pullback unless uh, you have good conviction you, you did your research on the company. So with that, um, you know, uh, CureVac is here, um, right here. They, they, you know, they got good gross margin. I like this gross margin here. Um, and as you can see here, valuation a little bit high, which is, uh, you know, which is understandable for these early stage companies. And they've done uh, negative 22% in three months and they've done a negative 31% in two weeks. I think they're trying to bounce off in one week and one day, as you can see here. You know, this is when we catch these type of companies. Uh, they have dropped a lot. Now they're trying to recover. So, you know, the worst is hopefully over and they're trying to recover. This is when we come in, invest, and uh, hold a nice chunk and wait for a good bounce back. Um, and they're down 56% from 52 week high. And as you can see here, RSI tells you stock is oversold. It's 31. It's a very good time to enter and have a good position for this stock. So, and this, with the way this chart is organized is I have sorted by three month performance. The company at the top, Elox, uh, it's uh, you know done bad in three months. And from there onwards, a little bit improvement as you can see here. And stock like BioNTech, you know, it's a very nice performance, 138%. Kindred, Moderna, they've done very well. So, you know, you could also look, I've also highlighted, highlighted some areas. For example, uh, AEZS, $87, $0.87 stock, nice gross margin. So some of these things you can look at, you know, when, if you, you know, when you get a chance because it's done nicely from a five-year sales, one-year sales perspective. Uh, dropped a lot you know you could you know put some money to work um, you know not too much uh, it's a very low dollar stock and as you scan through here you could also look at you know any companies that are that have some temporary weakness of late and have done nicely you know in uh, one year five year type time frame as you scan through even uh, here Cineos I think it's a little bit higher R RSI it's done nicely if there is a pullback you could buy this company and as we scan through here, we got uh, a few companies uh, that have done a little bit badly um, in uh, um, one day and one week. You could look at those and buy some if you wish um, and then take it from there. So we'll focus mainly on uh, CureVac here um, and uh, see if it's worth investing. As you look at the quick statistics here with CureVac, um, you know, no surprise when the company drops on a bad news, uh, in this case, uh, COVID-19 vaccine efficacy, which is lower, you know, the analysts will come in downgrade like uh, Bank of America Securities. They downgrade the company, put a target of uh, $50. Uh, 
I think those are our um, opportunities. Um, you know, these companies, analysts will downgrade after the headline news and stock will go further down. So that's a good opportunity to buy. From an earnings per share perspective, as you can see here, companies uh, investing in itself, they're not showing any profit. That's, uh, that's okay. Understandable for these early stage clinical, clinical companies. Nice sales growth. I like this clip here, 15, 20, 58. Nice sales growth. That shows you know, their partnership with um, Bayer um, and uh, other companies like GSK, uh, you know, Cephi and some of those companies. That's a good story. Shares outstanding is pretty um, you know, steady here. They're not uh, you know, giving out uh, more uh, offerings here from a share perspective. That's good. And as you scan through here, you know, uh, it's a $67 stock. Stock went up off late, uh, bounced back from the lows. Um, nice sales, $60 million in sales. Uh, nice gross margin, uh, 71%. Low debt, which is always good. RSI 31 tells you you can buy at this time. Institutions are backing this company. Valuation is a little bit high. That's understandable. Stock has dropped from 52-week high. They dropped a lot in the uh, last uh, two weeks, which is a good opportunity. Temporary weakness. Now they're trying to recover, which is a good story. And from a you know fundamental perspective, again, nice trading volume. You know this company is a liquid stock here. You can trade in and out. You know company stock you know goes up and down pretty dramatically at times. You could buy when they're down. You could sell when they're up if you want to, or you could also hold for a little while and get a bigger um, you know bounce and then uh, take some off. Nice cash, $1.6 billion in cash and very low debt, $68 million in debt. I think that's a very good story. And they got nice growth estimate for uh, you know next year. That's a good growth estimate, very good growth, growth estimate. A lot of free cash flow. They're spending money on R&D. They're committed to their COVID-19 and cancer vaccines, which is good, very good to hear. And as you can see, they're below their 20-day moving average below 33, below 50 day moving average, and same story, below 120 and 200 day moving average. So this is where stock has fallen off, now trying to bounce back. It's a good time to really invest some and hold it for a while. And if you look at their uh, fundamentals here, stock price is 67. They have bounced back a little bit uh, off late in the last uh, two weeks time frame. Market cap is very respectable, 12.56 billion. And they announced their quarterly earnings, uh, you know, um, I think in uh, May. And as you can see here, um, stock price has done nicely from $46, came all the way to 91. After this FD, after this, uh, you know, um, efficacy, low efficacy news came out, stock has dropped um, and now they bounced back a little bit. Uh, from a sales perspective, uh, it's a nice sales clip here. I like this sales clip. They're doing nicely. Uh, revenue surprise, I think they, they surprised on the negative side when they announced in May. Um, I think that's uh, understandable for these early stage companies. Uh, they have nice uh, quarter over quarter sales growth. Uh, that's uh, good, good news. Earnings per share perspective, they're negative at this time, which is very much understandable for these early stage clinical companies. Um, they got nice cash, $1.3 billion. That's a great story. They can invest in their company and boost their R&D and get some product out of the door. A nice free cash flow here and valuation is a little high like we talked about. So overall, I feel like you know, company is a good, solid foundation with a lot of cash and in investments in R&D like we talked about. So with that, let's jump in and uh, look at uh, the quarterly announcement and what we can read from it. They did their quarterly earnings announcement on May 26, and um, you know EPS was pretty much uh, you know in line, and revenue they missed by 2.62 million dollars. So that's one of the reason stock a little bit dropped, but uh, it's very under understandable for these early stage companies. And you know they are working uh, on the trials, as you can see here. Um, and uh, you know, I think this trial COVID vaccine came out uh, with the interim result of lower efficacy rate of 47%. That's why stock dropped. And they're working on the, on the booster vaccination. That's a good story. 
Um, and as you see here, um, they're, all, they're also look, looking at multiple variants of COVID-19 and making sure their drug works against all these multiple variants. Uh, that's also a good story. They're working with Bayer, as you can see here, uh, which is a big, uh, big partner. They got a lot of cash, like you talked about, uh, 1.3 billion euro. Um, they also had some, uh, you know, proceeds from the public offering. That's why their cash position boosted it. at this time. They got a lot of money. Uh, revenue was, uh, I think, 10 um, million euros, as you can see here, uh, which is up, uh, which is which is good to see. And you know, as you can see here, um, I think they are overall doing nicely. There is no uh, negative type uh, indication here. I feel like you know, companies got a lot of money. They are working on a nice pipeline here partnering with the bigger companies uh, to really get the drug out in the market and they're not giving up despite of this temporary um, issues they face. So with that, let's look at performance now. This is a little bit, uh, you know, uh, they, they are IPO very re recently. They don't have too much history, but let's look at uh, company's performance. So as you can see here, they've done nicely 47%, um, you know, in 2020. 2021, they are negative 21 percent. And, and as you look at the monthly performance here, um, you know it's up and down as you can see here. Back in September, down 15 percent, then shot up very nicely as you can see here, and came down in December, went up again January, February, came down a little bit in March, went up. Now we have two months of consecutive um, decline. I'm sure you know they will kind of you know um, come up again. So by looking at the company history, you know the company can go um, down severely and go up very nicely. That's uh, that's in the DNA of the company. So that's why I feel like hey, you know nothing strange here. It's uh, good to buy the company when it's, when it's down like this, given it's got great fundamentals and companies working on their R and D to really take this company to market as to go uh, take this drug to market. And if you look at the weekly performance here, uh, you know, same story repeats as you can see here, uh, weakness uh, back in February, um, four weeks continuously, stock went up, some weakness, stock went up. So, you know, nothing strange here. After the news about efficacy, low efficacy, stock dropped, you know, two weeks in June here, as you can see here, bounce back again. So nothing strange. Company knows how to handle these things. They're making appropriate changes. You know, this drop, I think they have more room to run and bounce back from this drop. That's why I feel like it's a good time to really buy some and hold it for, hold it for a long time. And if you look at the daily performance, I think uh, around 17, that's the big announcement. Stock dropped 38% and now they're trying to recover from it. I think it's a good time to buy. So stock dropped as low as 57, as you can see here on June 17. Now they've bounced back, you know, nicely to 67. So there is already a $10 improvement right now. I think it's a good time to really invest in this company um, for the long haul. And if you look at the monthly performance, and this company does not have too much history, as you know. We got just 2020 and few months of 2020 and 2021. Again, you know, very young company. And 2021, they've done negative uh, 50, 21.54%. They went as high as 133, as low as 47 um, by looking at the monthly performance here, uh, you know, a couple, uh, you know, if you go all the way to 10 to 10, 20, stock dropped here, bounced back, stock dropped, bounced back again. Uh, as you can see here, stock dropped, same, you know, pattern continues. I think this company can really do well and recoup from these uh, stock drops. Uh, I think that that kind of shows in the company's uh, chart here. That's why I like to invest in these type of companies with good fundamentals. And now if you look at the technical analysis, um, it's a chart from uh, TD Ameritrade, Think or Swim from TD Ameritrade, now it's Charles Schwab. As you can see here, this, this is a longer term chart, two year, two day chart. By looking at this chart here, there's earnings here, stock went up, earnings, stock went up, earnings, stock went up. There's a bad news about uh, lower efficacy, stock dropped big time. 
So I think, you know, right now stock is trying to appreciate as you can see here last four days it went up. So this is a good time. The bad news is uh, already factored in and companies making some progress now. I think this could be a good time to really jump in and buy some stock. Um, and as we scan through this year, um, they got, uh, you know, volatility really, uh, IV percentile is 887 so if you are a put option seller or a premium seller, you could some, sell some put option under the current stock price and make some money that way if you want to. Um, you know, put option selling as you know, you know, you don't get too much money, you get some money as an income. But you know, buying a stock or a, you know, buying a stock can be good because appreciation is more in buying stock. And from a DMI perspective, uh, understandable, it's a bearish at this time, the red line in the DMI went above the blue line. As you can see here, blue line is trying to recoup now slowly and red line is trying to trend down slowly, but there is a good distance. Whenever stock drops like this, the the gap between the red line and the blue line, you know, basically extends or, you know, expands. Um, that tells you right now it's uh, very bearish, but uh, I think uh, that's when we, we, we invest, when the fundamentals are right. No surprise here, the smart money is flowing into the stock and the people are, the big money managers are realizing this is a very good opportunity to buy. That's why after the drop here, um, money came out, but now money is flowing into the stock very nicely. So this is where we can also invest along with these big smart money managers and hold it for a long time. Um, this is a one-year um, uh, two-day chart. Again, I think we talked through this already. So now let's look at, um, you know, CureVac uh, option chain here. Let's see what folks are thinking in the options market. So this is October 21, 108 days out, um, you know, expiration October 21, 15 October 21. As you scan through this year, current stock price is 67, somewhere here, um, and if you look through here, we got a lot of open positions uh, above the current stock price. We got 153 here at 70, 246 at uh, I think $100, 608 at 110. As you look at here, we have one more here all the way at 150. So in the stock options market, folks are really betting this stock will go up. That's why they're buying out of the money call options um, above the current stock price. And, you know, there are some put options people bought just to hedge, as you can see here. We got put options all the way from uh, 100 all the way down to um, even 25, 30. So this is where, you know, some you know, folks want to pr protect themselves and buy some of these put options, which is very much understandable. So as you scan through here, this uh, this is the option statistics from uh, Thinkorswim. It tells you that a lot of call trading volume. Call volume is uh, 2,903, two put volume is 2,516. So that makes a put call ratio of uh, 0 0.86. That tells you, you know, people are not overly bullish because uh, you got, uh, you know, call options uh, more than put options, but put options have got pretty good size. You know, folks are also hedging at the same time. So with that, you know, given the call options traded, traded, traded is higher than the put options, you know, I would basically take the opportunity here, you know, buy the stock, you know, because of this huge drop and stock is also recovering nicely. I would, uh, you know, um, play on the longer side uh, against the natural, um, you know, traditional wisdom here. So with that, um, let's quickly sum up here. CureVac uh, stock has dropped a lot. What should I do? So, you know, there are various news, as you can see here, folks are wondering without a coronavirus vaccine of its own, is there a hope for CureVac stock? Um, so folks are wondering here, I think, um, you know, they have demonstrated the ability. Um, so I think uh, this is really folks wondering. I think uh, this is a, I'll remove this. This is from a different uh, analysis. And CureVac also has dropped 39% after the vaccine failure. I think folks are wondering the pain may be just getting started. And they're also working on this uh, variant rich environment. Um, they got their first generation COVID-19 vaccine candidate. Um, I think, you know, this company is not giving up as you can see here. They want to keep working on this vaccine um, and they also made some changes. 
they got a lot of money they, they are really putting the money to work with the r&d spend and they want to they they have a lot of money like we talked about they raised some money they got about more than a billion dollar right now and they are also working on this uh, booster vaccination which is always good and they announced the uh, appointment of dr malte uh, um, as a coo and uh, dr florian he is going to lead um, accelerated development of rna printer that's again a good news they are making the appropriate appropriate changes to take on the market always good so with that i feel uh, the stock is oversold at this time i feel like pure vac a ticker symbol c vac has a very good upside potential it's good to buy this stock on this weakness um, which is a temporary weakness in my mind and invest for the long haul so with that thank you very much happy investing